Hello, I'm John Aller, and I want to talk about the DVD-ROM, that would be the data DVD, that goes with this book, Autism, the Diagnosis, Treatment, and Etiology of the Undeniable Epidemic. Okay, we're putting the DVD in the drive, and the first thing that should come up is a uh, Windows Explorer file. And here's that Windows Explorer file. I'm going to go to the uh, setup exe file to start with. And here's the uh, opening screen. We have the uh, read the author's note first. Let's take that to begin with. And what you see here is uh, an introduction to what's on this uh, data DVD. And um, this is a link to the expanded table of contents. There's an instructor student manual. I'm going to pull that file up as well. And uh, the instructor student manual contains a lot of resources and materials which we'll go through. Just want to point to the PowerPoints for each chapter that teachers are always interested in. I'll open one of these just so you can get a look. You need, of course, a PowerPoint point program or a viewer program to uh, see these files and of course teachers could revise them if desired. Returning then to the teacher's manual, um, one other file I want to pull up is the uh, multiple choice questions with answers. This is a tremendous resource for the textbook that teachers and students alike find very useful. Let me just scroll down one screen and talk about question number two for chapter one. There are, by the way, 600 questions. As you can see as I scroll through here, here's question 50 for chapter 12. There are 12 chapters, 50 questions for each chapter. Each question is referenced against a page number in the textbook, as you can see. And um, going back to the top and scrolling down again to question two of chapter one. The primary purpose of this book is to A, show autism as a deep mystery, present opinions about the alleged epidemic, defend our own preferred point of view, all of the above, none of the above. Best answer to this question is E, none of the above. We're aiming to address and answer the question, what can be done to stop this epidemic and what can be done to recover those who are affected by it. Choice A can be ruled out. Everyone is already more or less aware that the CDC position is that autism is a deep mystery and most of pediatricians and people in the medical profession subscribe to that view with uh, some exceptions that we point out in the book. Our purpose is to solve the mystery, not merely to acknowledge its existence. Choice B is invalid because as researchers we're not only interested in opinions, and we, we do refer to some opinions, but we're really interested in discovering facts what people's opinions may be, even those the, the most impressive experts, is of secondary interest. Maybe important politics and social science, but the fundamental questions of biochemistry and what's going wrong in autism are not about politics or opinions. It's possible to study such issues, but they're not our primary concern. Choice C can be ruled out also. We have no interest in promoting a particular point of view. Our purpose is to find the causes of the evident autism epidemic. If assuming that there is one, and we show in the book that indeed there is. And uh, we want to do this in order to bring that epidemic to a halt. Therefore, all of the prior answers can be ruled out, including choice D, leaving only choice E, all of which is discussed on page two in the text. With this kind of presentation of questions, our students report that they're able to learn how to take the praxis exam and other standardized tests very, and whereas you could memorize maybe, oh, 10, 20, 30, maybe 50, maybe even 100 questions, um, our students tell us that it's just not possible to memorize 600 of these questions. As a result, uh, the amount of learning that takes place in studying through them and really understanding what's going on in the questions and why a particular choice is preferable to the other choices, linking it back to the textbook, all of that results in a tremendous amount of learning and this is certainly one of the finest tools uh, offered in the uh, autism DVD. We also pointed to the PowerPoints and uh, want to make 
note in the instructor uh, student manual here that we also have 23 different test forms. There are 12 50 item tests over each chapter and um, six 100 item tests over each pair of chapters. And we pull one of those up. Here's test over the test over chapters seven and eight. You'll see that when the, the answers are not showing when we're looking at the actual test that might be used in the classroom. These are all, of course, machine scorable, multiple choice questions, and they've been very uh, uh, carefully pre-tested so that uh, the tests work extremely well. I should point out in the teacher-student manual that um, better communication gets better results all around. If we provide the test answers in advance, we get better reliability and better validity and absolutely better results in terms of teaching and testing. The next thing I want to go to is the expanded table of contents. Now this is a kind of an abridged form of the whole book. Now to navigate this um, system, we can do it in several ways. This is the main navigation page to which you can return from uh, just about anywhere in the document. Um, we have a table of contents navigation, which allows you to go, for example, to the forward and then uh, if you scroll down just a bit, you can go return to the table of contents very easily by clicking on a contents link. We can also navigate by the figures list. For example, if we um, want to see the, for instance, figure two, three cases of autism reported in California from 1980 to 1994, we click on this link and we're at that page and we have that figure before us. The key thing is that the hyperlinks here in the uh, expanded table of contents are active and you should be able to go to any of those links that have been maintained on the internet. We can also navigate by a page numbers list. The page numbers list works this way. You can point to, um, let's say that I'm on page 275 and I want to uh, see the figures that appear um, on that page or information that appears on page 275, I can scroll to that uh, position in the text very readily uh, by first going to page 270 and then uh, simply scrolling down to page 275. But, uh, there are numerous links throughout the text that are uh, active and available for learners, thus uh, effectively expanding the textbook to the entire internet and the whole world. For instance, here's a link to uh, David Kirby's comments on the vaccine issue uh, addressed recently in the case of Hannah Poling. Here's a link to the Put Children First .org website, an extremely useful website built by J.B. and Lisa Handley. And each of these chapters is incredibly informative. Um, the, uh, the links to documents uh, vastly expand our capability of putting information into a textbook. I want to also demonstrate that we can use the search function on the uh, expanded table of contents file, so I can put in a name like Ethan Kurtz, for instance, and we can go directly in with uh, with ease to the uh, video of Ethan's recovery, which was provided to us courtesy of Stan Kurtz. So we've looked at the. Uh, instructor student manual. We've examined the expanded table of contents and we talked a little bit about the links that are available there and we certainly hope that you enjoy using the book. Thank you very much.